Greetings and welcome to the second episode of the Black Foundation Podcast. My name is Dr. Kamal Rashid. In today's episode, we are exploring the Afro-Brazilian martial art of capoeira. Today, we have a special guest with us, Dr. Edward Poe, a pioneer in this art in terms of being one of the first people to teach it in the United States. Dr. Poe will share his experiences and insight regarding capoeira and its particular significance to African Americans. We'll start today's show with a rap song that was commissioned by the Black Foundation that raises very interesting points about this art and its unique and valuable history. Given that the song is in Portuguese, after it plays, I will read through the lyrics in English for those of you who do not speak or understand Portuguese. A capoeira surgiu uh, quando um caçador soube que podia converter o seu próprio corpo numa armadilha. Capoeira é uma arte de origem africana, ouviu, ouviu, ouviu? Quem disse que o escravo usava os pés porque tinha as mãos acorrentadas? Mentiu, 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 mentiu. Capoeira África, capoeira África, capoeira África, capoeira África, capoeira África. Hoje vamos simplesmente resgatar nossos direitos que é muito fora sequestrado pelos brasileiros. Escritores nacionalistas da cultura africana apoderam-se dela quando desconseguem banila. Assim entre as demais aconteceu com a capoeira parida pela África que outrora foi exportada direto para o Brasil onde fora apelidada graças ao axé dos escravos naquela temporada quando as suas virtudes e crenças eram proibidas sempre que vistas em exibição severamente punidas. Então de onde veio o tal tempo para criá-la? É uma das lacunas que eu vejo na falsa história Por que não disputam pela origem da língua portuguesa Com a mesma força que relutam pela origem da capoeira Talvez por ser mais difícil dominar a gramática Do que explorar os gritos dos tambores da África Capoeira nasceu em África Capoeira é uma dança africana Capoeira nasceu em África A língua portuguesa dispensa argumentos Mas quando é capoeira falsificam documentos Tudo para negar suas origens africanas Despromovendo o africano na maioria das páginas Os livros publicados sem um conteúdo perfeito Com histórias mal começadas que só terão um bom desfecho Se realmente o começo for um erro e não missão Da branquificação nos canais da informação Repiso Capoeira é africana, apenas foi apelidada no Brasil desenvolvida Isso não significa que ela perdeu suas origens Mas sim que ela cresceu afastada de suas origens Na África praticantes eram caçadores de freiros Que defendeu a nação contra a agressão dos estrangeiros Usando três movimentos, fuga armação de uma armadilha E lançamento da armadilha nessa ordem de guerrilha Capoeira nasceu em África Capoeira é uma dança africana Nunca será biológico Mesmo que se encontre saudavelmente econômico O sangue é que fala, a cor não é um grau parentesco o Capoeira não é racista, embora sofreu tal desprezo Das classes sociais que sempre tentaram banila Enquanto os seus potenciais adormeciam na Bahia Mas hoje que ela acordou e despertou o seu valor As mesmas relutam pela origem do Criador Esta canção foi composta pelo Junior Povo em 2017 por resultado de um pedido da Black Foundation e o seu objetivo é ressaltar, afirmar a africanicidade da capoeira, um patrimônio atualmente contestado por um segmento da população brasileira. Esperamos que fique convencido e também comentários de todos são bem-vindos. Maicon! So the lyrics of the song in English are as follows. Capoeira was born when a hunter discovered he could convert his body into a trap. Capoeira is an art of African origin. Here, 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 here. Those who say it with slaves use their feet because their hands were in chains lied, lied, lied. 
Today, we are simply reclaiming our rights to ownership that for centuries were captured by Brazilians, nationalist rifters of African culture, kidnapped capoeira when they couldn't abolish it. Thus, among other things, occurred with capoeira, born in Africa and later exported directly to Brazil, where it received a new name, thanks to the resistance of the, of the slaves at that time. When their virtues and beliefs were banned, and when seen in exhibitions severely punished, then from where came that time to create it? One of the obvious lapses in its history. Why don't they dispute the origin of the Portuguese language with the same force that they exert the origin of capoeira? I think it is more difficult to dominate Portuguese grammar than to analyze the drum beats of African drums. Capoeira was born in Africa. Capoeira is an African dance. Capoeira was born in Africa. Capoeira is an African fight. With the affair of the Portuguese language, they dispense with arguments. But when it comes to Capoeira, they falsify documents, everything to deny its African origins, demoting that which is African in the majority of the pages. Of published books with an imperfect content, with stories badly begun that will not have a good result. If truly the beginning was an error and not omission, of the whitening of the channels of information. I repeat, capoeira comes from Africa. It was only dubbed capoeira and developed in Brazil. This does not mean that it lost its origins, but simply that it evolved, removed from its origins. In Africa, practitioners were hunters and iron workers. They defended the nation against foreign aggression using three movements, fight, evasion, arming a trap, and releasing the trap in this order of combat. Capoeira was born in Africa. Capoeira is an African dance. Capoeira was born in Africa. Capoeira is an African fight. A father who adopts will never be a biological father, even though the child is made economically healthy. Blood is what speaks. Color is not measured of parenthood. Capoeira is not racist, although it suffered from racism. Certain social classes who always tried to ban it while it potentially slept in Bahia. But today that capoeira has awakened and evoked its value, the same people wish to claim to be the original creator. Upshot, the song was composed by Junior Polvo in 2017 as a, as a result of a request by the Black Foundation. Its objective is to emphasize, affirm the Africanity of capoeira, a patrimony contested by a segment of the Brazilian population. We hope that you are convinced of this, of this truth and also welcome comments from all. Mike Orn. Again, with us today to discuss Capoeira, as well as his own experiences and perspective on this art, is Dr. Edward Poe, who has a very unique background as it relates to Capoeira. So I prepared several questions for Dr. Poe, and we'll begin with the first one. Dr. Poe, why is it so important to affirm the African origin of Capoeira? Well, thank you for having me on the podcast again for a second time. Uh, in response to your question, I would say that it's extremely important for Black people to realize that capoeira has an African origin for the same reason that it is important to know that ancient Egyptian civilization is of African origin. That is, such a knowledge demonstrates that Africans too have made significant contributions to world civilization and many fields of endeavor, including martial arts, and helps raise the image and self-esteem of Blacks all over the world. The argument that affirms that Brazil, the Brazilian origin of capoeira is based on a racist view that pure Africans were incapable of the creation or even execution of such a marvelous art form without white input. It does claim that it came as a primitive form before it was developed and improved on Brazilian soil with non-African input. Indeed, one book uh, by a renowned author there even claims that Africans were incapable of performing acrobatic movements and needed to become mulattoes to enable them to do so. So going further, why does the Black Foundation attach so much importance to Capoeira? Well, just as the Chinese Republican period from 1912 to 1948 
heralded native fighting techniques as the means of rebuilding the spirits and the bodies of its citizens who were faced with the onslaught of Western athletics. So the Black Foundation has chosen Capoeira from Angola and Umlabalaba from KwaZulu Natal to help develop the bodies, minds, and spirit of its Black citizenry. Capoeira for us is the equivalent of Kung Fu for Blacks, and Angola is our Shaolin temple. So that's an interesting analogy. Um, how were you initially exposed to it? And also, how does it differ from other martial arts? Well, in, 1960, in 1967, I believe, yeah, I was awarded a Fulbright scholarship to, to Brazil to improve my Portuguese language skills. I was originally assigned to Pernambuco, but because of the numerous school strikes at that time, I requested and received a transfer to Bahia. From the very first time I witnessed Capoeira, I deemed it to be magical. My first encounter with the art was when I saw it being performed uh, at uh, Meshubastinha's Academy in Pelourinho. During that presentation, João Grandi engaged in a match with uh, Cabrinha. At one point, João Grandi was spinning on his head on the floor with no hand support as Cabrinha ran around him in circles. João then suddenly rose to his feet and delivered a powerful head blow to the midsection of Cabrinha that sent him flying over the heads of the awestruck spectators who were seated on benches. From that moment on, I decided that I had to learn it. Tupperware was not only beautiful, but powerful as well. After learning the basics of the art, or should I say science, I discovered it was very different from other martial arts, mainly because of its one, two, three sequence. Namely, avoid, not block a blow, by entering into a negative. Two, well, in the negative, arm an attack. And three, release the attack when the opponent was within range. No other martial art that I know of has this hunter trapper technique as its core. Moreover, the musical rhythm accompanying the combat echoes this one, two, three sequence. After discovering capoeira, I was exposed to numerous other martial arts of African origin and indeed wrote my doctoral dissertation dealing with traditional martial arts, the Hausa people of Northern Nigeria, uh, which that dealt with dumbe, which is a, a one-hand boxing, shanchi, wristlet fighting, and kokwawa wrestling, and several others, uh, other contests, all of which employed impressive, sympathetic, and homeopathic magic, music, and lyrics, but none of which was as magical or as beautiful as Capoeira. Thank you for that. So given that you encountered it and that you were impressed by it, how did you go about learning it? That's a good question. After seeing Juan Grandi's uh, performance in 1967, I immediately matriculated as a student in Pashinas Academy, where I trained three days a week under the supervision of a capoeirista by the name of Getulio, who taught me the basic moves. During that training, one Monday, he kicked me in the head with a Abu Jihaya. That's a, a kick distinctive uh, that characterizes capoeira. And I quit, knowing never to return. And nevertheless, I returned that Wednesday and continued with the knowledge of once bitten, twice shy. Indeed, my defense was so rapid, I was never hit again by anyone. Since Pastinha only trained three days a week, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I sought out other mysteries so I could practice every day. Among those who significantly contributed to my knowledge and practice of the art in Bahia were Meshri Kaisara, Meshri Bimba, and Meshri Gato. And in Rio, Mr. Hawkey, who taught at the favela Pavalzinho, and the Grupo Senzala, who won the Beating Bow of Oro competition that year. I might add that Mr. Caixara told me he could hit any one of his students, but could not hit me. And Mr. Hawkey remarked that if I had been on his team, they'd have, they would have won the Beating Bow of Oro competition that year in Rio. 
My nome de guerra at that time was simply o americano. But now at 80, I've changed it to que de seis. Because nowadays, when I try to execute a que de quatro, I fall flat on my behind. <laughs> que de <you> seis. <laughs> so it's a very, very rich um, a number of rich and valuable you know, connections. What have you done thus far to promote Capoeira? Okay, first and foremost, when I was director of Black Studies program at or Black Education programs at Eastern Washington State College from 1971 to 1973 in Cheney, Washington, I established perhaps the first Capoeira Academy in the U.S., which was in essence a, a community outreach program project. We had over 50 Black children from the community aged eight to 14 in that program and performed at the World Fair in Spokane, as well as on TV and in many other venues as well. We even performed in Oregon. That project ended after two years when I left Washington to assume an administrative position with the Peace Corps in Africa. After that, in importance, I wrote three books dealing with capoeira, namely Capoeira in Congo, uh, which compares capoeira with the Congo dance from Panama. Uh, second book was the ABC and Beaba of capoeira, which is a comprehensive study of capoeira and all its ramifications. And the third book was Elementos Básicos de Capoeira. And this last volume, in essence, is a workshop that, that among other things, contains comic book representations of many Ladainas and Coidos. I also founded FACA, which means knife in Portuguese. That stands for Federação Autónoma de Capoeira Africana. That's the Autonomous Federation of African Capoeira. And have given many Capoeira workshops throughout the world, including Mozambique, East Timor, Indonesia, India, Zambia, Namibia, Malawi, São Tomé and Principe, Chicago, etc. In addition to workshops, I've also given lectures and talks dealing with capoeira and black martial arts at various venues in uh, Salvador da Bahia, São Luís de Maranhão, Washington, D.C., Madison, Wisconsin, etc. Moreover, we are now promoting capoeira as a major element in our Rising Star Initiative. The song you heard at the beginning of the presentation, by the way, was a co-creation of our Black Foundation with Junior Povo from Mozambique. We're also working with FACA US, which is a capoeira campfire, so to speak, managed by LaCour Yancey, which will support and serve as a forum, mainly for Afro-American capoeiristas. Lastly, why in your view should African-Americans learn capoeira? Oh, there are many reasons, many reasons. First and foremost, African-Americans should learn this art so that they can defend themselves physically and mentally from any and all adver adversaries. Indeed, because of capoeira, I was able to save myself from death or severe injury on at least three occasions that I can recall. And even now at 80, I still walk erect and fearlessly. We all know that dogs can smell fear in an individual and bark when a fearful person draws near. And I've never heard a dog bark at the approach of a capoeirista. Secondly, the practice of the art exercises and strengthens all parts of the bodies, even the pinky, which like yoga leads to better health. Thirdly, learning how to play the instruments associated with the art that's the beating bow, the agogo, the drum, the eco uh, and particularly the beating bow, develops an appreciation for music and rhythm. Indeed, a capoeirista, when playing in the hoda, must accommodate his motions and emotions to the rhythm of the toki being played. Fourthly, learning the songs associated with capoeira puts us in contact with the history, philosophy, and spirit of our African ancestors and aids in the formation of a proud community with which the novice can identify. A community that has embraced a long tradition handed down to them 
by their ancestors over many generations. Indeed, capoeira is not only a martial art of African origin, it instills in its practitioners an African worldview that sees the world from an African rather than a European perspective. So Dr. Paul, I wanna thank you for those responses. Um, your background in capoeira is particularly interesting, but, uh, specifically the fact that you were in Bahia at such a time and encountered uh, such a collection of notable figures in Capoeira and have been able to contribute to it in various ways over the decade is particularly compelling. Please join us. So I want to thank you again. And I also want to invite you, the listener, to join us for our next podcast, where we'll be joined by Wesley Cox. We'll be providing a discussion of the Zulu board game, Um Laba Laba, along with its potential and value. Thank you again.